talk about food just as much as you eat it you are in good company hello we are kit international student society today we are going to explore the diversity of food all around the world in our society we represent 14 countries so among those 14 countries we have 14 different dishes I would like to welcome you all for the International Food Exploring Program. Hello everyone, my name is Broga Parvita Priya and I am from Bangladesh. Today I am here to talk about the food culture of my country. Traditional authentic Bangladeshi cuisine is made up of diverse range of delicious herbs, rice, fish, meat and bread. But it is much more than that. Consistency of rich, creamy flavorism, curries and dal, the food in Bangladesh is often comparable to Indian food due to the fact that they share a border, a history of British rule and cultural similarities, including the love for spicy food. Famous food of Bangladesh are not just delicacies in Bangladesh, but a big hit in Western countries too. Similar to the other countries in Asia, curry is the most famous form of Bangladeshi food. Bangladesh is the fourth largest producer of rice in the whole country, so rice is the staple of Bangladeshi diet. A wide range of seafood and fish are eaten across Bangladesh. The most popular and national fish is Ilsa. Apart from that, catfish, rohu and tilapia are the common one that people eat in their daily lives. Foods like shoshlegish, biryani, chini malai curry, fini, halim, faluda are the delicious food that you can try out in Bangladesh. But I would suggest the best way to experience the Bangladeshi cuisine is to come here, take the inside and smell the food and experience the culture of my country through taste. My name is Cynthia and I will be talking to you guys about the simple food in my country. I am from Nairobi, Kenya. I am a student in Kitchen Rapsi School of Film in that year. So the simple food in my country is uh, made, uh, just typically eaten. Everywhere in the country you will like find it everywhere. So but the most common food that is made out of this is grounded maize flour, which makes ugali, which is what I'll be taking you through in the next video. I'll be taking you through the process. It's quite easy. That is why it is so common, and everybody, every family enjoys ugali because it's, it's easy to make. It's fast to make. It doesn't take long, and it can be eaten by anyone. You will love it. But in Kenya, we have other foods that are eaten, there are those that are ancient, and there are those cuisines that uh, you would definitely love if you visited Nairobi.
Kiswahili Computer Engineering student. We are going to talk about jello fries. Jello fries is made out of rice and chicken. We are going to talk about the process of, the, of cooking the rice. You need to first get the rice, boil it, and then you blend tomatoes and add some spices to it, and then you mix the tomato spices into the rice. Then the chicken, you need to first boil the chicken, and then you fry it, and then you mix it together with the this is how jello fries is made. Thank you. Enjoy. My name is Bisharit Watari Usman. I'm a Ghanaian and I'm a student of KT University. I'm doing BBA and I'm in my final year. Today we're going to be talking about one of the best dishes in my country and it is called Banku with Okra Soup. You know, most Ghanaians do love that food and then like if you are a Ghanaian, you will really understand the reason why a lot of Ghanaians do like that food. And if you even taste it yourself, even if you are not a Ghanaian, no matter where you are from this world, but you know, food is food. As long as, I um, mean, you just eat it and then, I mean, something good would go into your stomach, it's good. It will really help. And then today I will be talking about that food and it is so, that food is good. And then a lot of Ghanaians do like it and it is made with effort, not too much effort, just a little bit effort and then you'll be able to make it. Even though um, the ingredients that you use to make the food is not really here, that is the only problem. It, some are here but not all. So if you want to make it, it's going to be really hard for you to make it here. But it's one of the best dish in my country and a lot of Ghanaians do like that food. And then most. Ghanaian homes, they do cook it. Even most of the times, I can say that most of the times, most Ghanaians do love eating it because they really see, I mean, the impact of eating that food. So, with, um, I really don't know what to say, but um, like, I don't have much to say though, but that food is really good and it's one of the best and favorite dish in my country. So, um, with this, I will say that that is how um, this is one of the uh, good food in my country and then a lot of Ghanaians will like it. Thank you.
after exploring some of our food cultures i know you guys feel hungry but wait we have some another food cultures as well so let's explore the ethiopian food culture and this dish has made by our ethiopian friends lydia and messi Hello everyone, so we've got here an Ethiopian tradition food which is basically known as uh, bayanet. Let me explain what we have got here. Here we've got split pea uh, which is known as an Ethiopian kuk uh, alitakuk. It's kind of hard to pronounce it. We've got here the main dish that goes uh, on the plate. I'll show you back. Uh, potato curry or yeah, a potato curry and it's known as Yeah, or stew, and it's known as uh, in, in Ethiopian the uh, nichuet. And we've got here a salad. We've got tomato, uh, cabbage, and green chili, lemon salad basically. Here we have uh, cabbage and carrots, just uh, fage fried. You can say that. And uh, here we've got a whole lint. Uh, we call it in Ethiopian different dessert. I'll eat other food, sir. So this is the food we have got, and the main, the main uh, uh, part of Ethiopian food is injera. Here we have injera, and the whole food goes over here on the plate. And uh, so the main dish is this one, as I said earlier. So uh, then I will show you how it goes later. So uh, as I have explained earlier, uh, the plating goes like this. We've got all the dishes that has been cooked like this. So this is what we call bayanet in Ethiopia. It's a really nice dish and it's full uh, vegan food. We can say that. So the thing is that this injera is used uh, to like to fold it. We take a piece of it. Baby, you can't be full. I prepared a perfect oh. gusha for you. No, no, please. My arm is fine. fine. Oh. Thank you. Okay, you forgot to bow. Okay, sorry, sorry. We'll That's do it, it again. No, 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 no. No, no let's please. say one more, one more. And mm. don't forget to. Mm -hmm. There you go, mm -hmm. Bubba. Hey there, um, my name is Hayas from Kids School of Biotech and today we're simply going to talk about the food culture in Uganda, right? <clears throat> so, um, stemming from that, I want us to talk about the issue of staple food in Uganda. I think in Uganda we don't have a staple food, right? It only depends on where you are, which region of Uganda you're in, because each region they have their staple food, you know? Uh, for example, if you go to the north, that is northern Uganda, uh, these people love millet, right? They have millet and they call it a kalo. So they get millet, mix it with water and maybe they get peanuts as sauce, paste or anything else that they will use as sauce. But the staple food there is millet called a kalo. Now when you come to the central, things change. There is matoke, 
the central people or the baganda they love matoke so much so that's the step of food in the central and if you go to the east they love malewa right that is the step of food right there and then we have um, our friends like the masoga for them they love mboli and maido that is uh, g-nuts and uh, sweet potatoes right so it really depends if you go to the west and even some parts of uh, the east they love milk products like if it's a milk product for them it makes their day like yoga cheese there is the so-called bongo you know all those are milk products they love those that's the staple food right there so uh when it comes to uganda i really think uh, we don't have a staple food we only have staple food spa area okay though it's theoretically said because most of the things most of the, the like maybe the tourists business what happens in the central and the staple food in the central is matoke it's on the internet you'll find that the staple food of uganda is matoke but that's not really 100 percent right they based on the fact that it's in the central and that's the staple food in the central and they say the staple food of uganda is matoke but um if you want to know the real staple food it depends on where you are which region you are and then that's the staple food though not at this time of the year we put the staple food thing aside all Ugandans who run towards the Senate, right? It's called grasshoppers. We love those things so much. But at this point, uh, we don't care about Matoke, Malewa, Kalo, Boli. No, we all run towards getting grasshoppers because they come twice a year and they're very delicious. So I think in this uh, period, our step of food is insane. But uh, putting that aside, uh, each region has its own step of food. When the grasshoppers are still raw, they are made in green. But when they start flying them, they become goldish, brown or goldish. And now we have finished washing the grasshoppers. We can sieve them and put them in the saucepan. Okay, this is what we have now. They are clean. Uh, because they take long to prepare, so we are going to put them on fire and then we shall do the ingredients afterwards. So you can see there is some water in the grasshoppers, so we put it on, we put the saucepan on fire until this water dries. So I'm going to cover the saucepan and... So our grasshoppers are on fire. Yes. Uh, so now it's time for me to prepare the ingredients. We do the ingredients last because the grasshoppers take some time to get ready. So here with me I have some tomatoes, I have onions, I have garlic, I have green pepper. So it's time to keep them, to wash them. Oh, you can feel the aroma, you know? You add a little bit of oil, just a little bit of cooking oil, just a little bit, not so much. If you go to the market now, you will find hundreds of people engaged in grasshopper business. Sometimes even when you go to the big hotels, you will find grasshoppers. It's very, very, it's very delicious. We are almost ready, so we can add our ingredients. So we are going to add the onions, the tomatoes, and green peppers. Remember, these ones are supposed to be added when the grasshoppers are almost ready to eat. Because if you add them at the beginning, they will get burnt. So now it's time. So I think now we are getting there. Almost ready for some, to be served. Now you can see the grasshoppers are ready. Very tasty, very nutritious, very crunchy in your mouth. Hello guys, uh, I'm Omega Saini from Afghanistan, country representative in Kate International Society, in Kate University. 
Uh, today I'm gonna talk about the food and dishes in Afghanistan. So we have lots of delicious food, that's including vegetable and non-vegetable. And we have sweets and they are really, really tasty. And most of the people from around the world when they are traveling to Afghanistan, usually they are uh, testing the foods and um, today I'm gonna talk about one of the most and the, the most and the delicious food in Afghanistan we named Qabli Palau so as you will see how we will make in the end of this video we will show you how to make this Qabli Palau and how it's famous in Afghanistan so follow me now I'm gonna show you the procedure how to make this delicious food in your homes and test it with your family. Thank you. from Tanzania, a country representative from Tanzania. Um, I would like to explain a little bit about uh, the culture of foods here in Tanzania. Uh, most of people here in Tanzania, they used to eat uh, that normal food like rice, uh, uh, mean beans, uh, ground nuts, uh, and, and so many fishes. Uh, as we know, um, most of Tanzania here um, and so they cultivate the crops which are used as food and I prepared that kind of food as kachumbari which is made up of uh, tomatoes, onions and other ingredients because sometimes uh, people use it as uh, vegetable which is uh, eaten together with rice, uh, uh, stiff porridge, other uh, used to call it ugali so uh, it, 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 it's most uh, it, it's common to find someone using kachumbari as his or her food here in Tanzania but not most the most foods which are eaten here in Tanzania are just normal foods like rice ugali um, and uh, uh, fishes beans and such like that so that is in belief uh, that is the culture of food here in Tanzania
Sri Lanka has one of the most unique food cultures in the world. If you are visiting Sri Lanka, you will so understand that people around the world don't do food like Asians do. Our food culture has some similarities to other Asian countries but highly distinctive. The everyday meal in most Sri Lankan homes will have one or two kinds of vegetable curries. A dal or yam curry with rice, rotis or string hoppers. Apart from this, meat and fish, uh, fried or curried, uh, condiments with something savory and something sweet. Uh, papadang and chutney are quite common. In our food, chutneys and pickles are must for special occasions and in some homes, everyday occurrence. Everyday Sri Lankan food aims to balance various tastes. This philosophy of food is missing in various food cultures around the world. Most people in the world eat vegetables cooked in different ways but use mostly salt and pepper as taste enhance. Once you try Sri Lankan way of cooking, you will be amazed to note how many things we use to enhance the flavors of our food. We are a nation that can't imagine foods without plenty of species. Even our everyday packet of roasted curry powder is a mix of at least 8 species. No wonder most Sri Lankans embrace the spicier the better philosophy. Sri Lankans are generous when it comes to portions. It's not common when you are invited to a meal in a Sri Lankan home. The host will beg you to have a second portion. We like to share our food with family, loved ones and our friends. Thank you. Namaskar, I am Suraj Kumar Khan pursuing second year of my undergraduation in Computer Science and Engineering. Today I am going to talk about Nepalese food culture. Nepal, the name itself is not only famous for the scenic beauty, landscapes and mountains, but is also renowned for its culture, tradition and cuisine. Nepal, food is culturally diverse as it is geographically and ethnically. There are over 100 ethnic communities in Nepal. Every one of them, the food culture, deeply rooted in the environment they live in. Dal is a national cuisine in Nepal which is cooked twice a day at lunch and dinner in every house. Along with dal and bath, curry are served that are almost mandatory items during the meal.
another amazing food culture. None other than Nigerian food culture. Nigerian foods are colorful and lavish. While aromatic market and roadside snacks cooked on barbecue or in oil are in a dance and variant. Let's explore the Nigerian food culture. Hi, uh, this is Astro Behra and I live in Raukela, uh, situated in Odisha in India. So today I am going to speak uh, something about our Indian food culture. So first of all, Indian food uh, like its culture is varied and is quite popular across the world. Indian food is the blend of various types of herbs and spices which make its every dish very special. Though most of the countries love Indian food, what they considered is that it is quite spicy when compared to other cuisines. So most of them when they think of Indian food, all they can think is of the wide varieties of food that is available, uh, be it the sweets or the rice dishes or the curries or the snacks, Indian cuisines has it all. So Indian food is uh, delicious and is quite exciting and includes the use of various exotic flavors. Also. Another thing that pops up in our mind when we think about Indian food and cuisine is the wonderful spices that are used in cooking. So let us learn a little bit about Indian food uh, which is the favorite of many world. So Indian food is uh, wide and includes a lot of variety. So each state of India has its own culture and also a special type of food that uh, reflects their tradition. So Indian food is uh, cooked using various methods, uh, most of them uh, which is used to uh, remain the preserves or the nutrients which is contained in the fresh vegetables which is also con considered very healthy for the body. The traditional way of uh, uh, cooking Indian food includes uh, making everything uh, right from the scratch. Indian food is uh, you know uh, mostly free from preservatives uh, which includes uh, uh, natural preservatives uh, that is derived from the trees and many herbs. This way you all get the nutrients that is required for the body. Indian cooking also makes use of number of herbs and spices that are good for the human health. Some of the herbs include turmeric, ginger, garlic and so on. Indian food also use uh, yogurt which is also called fermented milk which is again helpful in preserving, uh, preserving healthy bacteria. Also, Indian food not only tastes good, but is also quite healthy. So that's all that I can speak. Thank you very much.
10 cuisine is considered one of the most ancient uh, cuisines at all. It uh, derives uh, it, its diversity from the generous and comfortable nature of Syria. Uh, as it well known, uh, each city uh, has its own distinctive cuisine. And what uh, makes it distinctive uh, is the switch com combines between the Syrian folkloric dishes and the uh, modern ones. We can mention here appetizers, variety of salads, grills, kippe, kip and drinks such as black uh, Paris and Kamadine uh, and uh, liqueurs, dates in uh, and uh, iron. Uh, whenever uh, we talk about uh, Syrian meals, uh, the first thing uh, that comes to our mind uh, is uh, being healthy. Uh, but uh, there's the same uh, time full of fat, especially olive oil and uh, Arabic ghee, which is very, very heavy and strong. For such reasons, we could uh, say the Syrian food is almost uh, non fish, and then you can find uh, someone fish out there. Uh, our food is based often on uh, meats like chicken, beef, lamb, and seafood. And we can't uh, fail to remember uh, the Damascus sweets, which are one of the oldest sweets on the world. everyone this is Jaydi Sharma from Bhutan so I will be talking about the food culture in our country Bhutan is a small country that is located between the two large countries that is India and China despite being a small country our country is rich in culture and tradition so the food culture in Bhutan is deeply influenced by our landscape as Bhutan is nestled in Himalayas and meanwhile the eating habit of Bhutan is affected by our neighboring countries that is India and China so the Bhutanese people love uh, spicy food so much that they add chilies in every dish and it is a distinctive feature of Bhutanese cuisine. And the combination of cheese and chili will make the Bhutanese cuisine even more special. And the local people in our country love dairy products so much in order to supplement heat and moisture. And there are plenty of dishes cooked with cheese and chili whether paired with vegetable or meat. And the national dish of our country consists of cheese and chili and it is known as Emadasi. Literally, if you all happen to visit Bhutan, your trip will be incomplete without tasting Emadasi.
കേൾപ്പിച്ചയാ ടേക്ക് എ ടേസ്റ്റ് കം ജോയ് ലൈഫ് ഈസ് സോ എൻഡ്ലെസ്ലി ഡിലീഷ്യസ് വി കെയം ടു ദി എൻഡ് ഓഫ് അവർ ഫുഡ് എക്സ്പ്ലോറിംഗ് പ്രോഗ്രാം സി യു നെക്സ്റ്റ് ടൈം ഹാവ് എ ഗുഡ് ഡേ